Hello and welcome into the next verse. My name is George and if this is your first time here or you've been here before but have not subscribed yet, please do so. Along with hitting the thumbs up button for me, very much uh, appreciate those and drop your comments. Definitely drop your comments. All right, well the New York Knicks just pulled off a victory that I will say, I will say uh, we rarely get. We rarely get these kind of games where we have a lead. Uh, well, the previous Knicks, let's put it that way. The previous version of this Knicks. This Knicks team has evolved into a team that actually knows how to close out victories now. What a tremendous turn of events here. This is why the Knicks are now 42 and 30 and they are poised to actually win 50 games this season. And I'll show you the breakdown of that. We're gonna get into the stats. I got highlights, everything for you guys. Let's go. Here we go, 116 to 110. It was a matinee game at Madison Square Garden today, the first game after a nice three game, uh, three day uh, break for the Knicks after that West Coast trip where they went two and two. The New York Knicks right here, this guy, Josh Hart has been a revelation. We all know it, we've seen it. Uh, they're just a totally different team since he's been on it. He has injected a dog into every, well, he's, he's injected that dog mentality into this lineup and it's brought out the dog and a lot of other players to, uh, now on this team, which is fabulous. And I'm gonna get, to, I'm gonna show you something about RJ as well. But this was the first game, the return of Jalen Brunson, and man, did he take care of business in that first quarter. Came out firing 16 points. He cooled off. He cooled off afterwards. But fortunately, the rest of the team picked up the slack. And the, uh, and at one point, the Knicks were down about 13 points in this game and they battled back to take the lead. And then it was a tight, tight fourth quarter. But there was a stretch. There was a stretch there. Oh, but look at this. Look at this. I told you, 42 and 30. Knicks are fifth. They're just uh, two and a half games behind Cleveland. Yes, Cleveland must be feeling the heat. They do not want to play the Knicks is what I'm hearing. Yep, here it is. Knicks Muse tweeted this out. Cavs insider Chris Fedor uh, no one inside the organization would say this publicly, and they shouldn't. But multiple people I've spoken to recently are privately hoping for a Brooklyn matchup. The Cavs are currently matched up against the Knicks. Man, I want it. I want. I want the Cavs matchup. I think it'll be, it'll be great for basketball. It'll be great for the Knicks. Uh, I do believe already on record saying I do believe the Knicks can take the Cavs, uh, and I think uh, that's what. This is what we need. We got to get to that second round. And it would change, it, you know, when I say that, <laughs> I still remember back at a time when we were just hoping to get into the playoffs. Now we're looking at a, a legitimate ability to take care of business in that first round and get it to the second round and then see what happens. This is tremendous. Every, every player on the Knicks has gotten better this season. And that's why they're winning and they're gelling they're understanding the weaknesses and the advantages that each player has better when they're on the courts and we're starting to exploit them. I love the way this team is playing. I, I, I this, is, this is why I fell in love with basketball. It's this type of play, this type of commitment to team, this type of, well, just the dog mentality that I was talking about before. Outstanding, outstanding. In the last 12 games, the Knicks are nine and three. And they now have, they just capped off this win and to give yourself a, a, a three game winning streak. So we had a six game winning streak, a three game winning streak, and now a nine game winning streak during this period post the All Star game. Post the All Star game. I tweeted this out uh, during that third quarter run because Mitch was a big reason why the Knicks were able to take care of business in that third quarter. Got to give the big man. Uh, salvage 23, uh, 23 salvage uh, big props for his bit his effort to keep the ball out of Jokic hands during this third quarter run that has led to Knicks getting back in this game he's so good at responding on the court after off the court awkwardness and you guys all know what I'm referring to his social media posts uh, whining about not getting enough uh, focus on the defensive an uh, offensive end not getting any looks there no plays being run for him but look what he did Whatever, whatever it was, I heard Brunson spoke to him, uh, and he immediately came out and apologized for how he did it. Uh, and even Thibs uh, kind of not dismissed it, but took it as just, just the way things are because these are competitive players. 
and they're human beings and uh, they have a lot of things going on. But tonight, today, today, he put it all out on the court, took care of business against the MB the reigning MVP and probably will win MVP once again. Mitchell Robinson finished a plus 11, plus 11 while on the court, plus 11. Fantastic. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. So while there was a run during the game in that third quarter where, uh, okay, what happened was, here's what it was. I was looking over my notes. Uh, Denver went, they went on a crazy run at the beginning of the third quarter. They connected on 14 of 16 shots during a stretch there to take the lead 77-67 with about nine minutes left in the third quarter. Then, boom, Mitch, everybody that second unit starts taking over and they whittle it down and the Knicks go on a 17-4 to run, 17-4 run during a 348 run stretch there in the game to tie the game 88-88 with only 244 left in the game. And at that point, you kind of felt, oh, did we use up all of our energy right there during that run? And you know what, let's get to the highlights, let's talk about it. You wonder, did we use up all of our energy to, to tie the game up? Because we've seen it in the past where we're just not able to ex uh, you know, to execute in that fourth quarter to secure these wins, but not of late. This was another tremendous, this was, I, I think, this has got to be up there in the top five of, of, mo of best wins of the season, if not even higher, honestly. It's definitely in the top five. Look at this play. I love this. When you have your two guards out there connecting like that on the fast break, it was beautiful. R.J. Barrett, even though R.J. missed all three of his three-point attempts, he hit all. Uh, he hit eight out of ten from inside the arc. Eight out of ten. He to provide twenty-one points tonight, four rebounds, two dimes, and I thought he played some some very good defense. I think his defense has taken a leap up since the All Star game, and I'll show you some stats to uh, to kind of uh, to enforce that. And that, but also I think it's Josh Hart. He Josh Hart came to this team post trade deadline. And it almost exposed RJ's lack of defensive intensity, especially out on the perimeter, just all over the court. It exposed it so much that RJ had to address it. And I can see he has totally. Uh, he, he's now, first of all, he's getting blocks. He's getting steals. Uh, he's intimidating uh, uh, shooters out on the perimeter, forcing them to make other decisions. That's all we ask for. That's what we ask for. You become a winning player when you can deliver on a defensive end and give us that kind of efficiency inside the arc. I'm hoping that the three-point shot turns around because we're definitely going to need it in the in in the playoffs. Definitely going to need it in the playoffs. But man, look, oh, a uh, Randall here. Randall also Randall had kind of a, an awkward game, but he still delivered for us 20 points. Uh, hit all seven of his free throw attempts, but only shot one of six from the three-point line. RJ and Randall are both shooting below. Uh, 20 uh, below 20 percent from the three-point line in the last uh, three games or so and, and yet we're, we're three and oh during that stretch just shows you how uh, look at that isaiah hardenstein with the tremendous block all the other guys have picked up the slack we have depth up and down this lineup right now i would like to have seen deuce come in look at that beautiful i would like to have seen deuce come in in that third quarter because i felt like we were kind of getting a little stagnant a little lethargic uh, weren't uh, rotating quick enough but Look, shout out to Thibs. He, he went with his rotation, and the Knicks responded in a beautiful fashion in that third quarter. Right, oh, this was a nice play. Look at that. Look at that. Mitch Robinson with an assist to Obi. Beautiful. That was the precision pass of the game. <laughs> uh, let's see. Jalen Brunson was the high score for the Knicks. 24 points, shot 9 of 20 overall. 2 of 5 from the three-point line. Hit all four of his free throw attempts. This is going to shock you a little bit. Well, for one, the Knicks took care of business at the free throw line. That's a major reason why we were able to come back and then hold on to the lead, especially when it was getting tight. The Knicks shot 25 of 28 free throw attempts. Connected on 25 for eight, almost, almost 90% from the three-point line. But this was the huge, huge difference in this game. All right? The entire second half. The entire second half, the Knicks outscored Denver 54 to 43. All right. So we were a plus 11 in that second half. But why were we a plus 11? We didn't shoot the three that great. We were four of 11. Uh, we did shoot. We were a tremendous inside the arc. Tremendous inside the arc. We were 15 of 25. We shot 
oh my god 60 percent inside the arc that's fantastic but the three-point line i mean uh the free throw line not the three-point line the free throw line was the difference we went to the stripe 14 times connected on 12 denver only went three times denver only got three free throw attempts in that second half that is the reason why the Knicks were able to secure this victory because they were not making foolish fouls, sending uh, Denver to the charity stripe, stopping the clock. No, they played to their strengths and they were the ones benefiting from the foul calls. In fact, the Knicks only committed seven fouls in that second half while Denver committed 12 of them. So I was out sending, and we did uh, get a little sloppy with the, with the ball in the second half. We, uh, we committed five turnovers, which is not so bad for, for an entire half, but we forced nine turnovers from the Nuggets. That's right. They committed nine turnovers, and they uh, we had six steals in that second half. And, oh, no, six, yeah, six steals. Six steals, three blocks in that second half. Wow. And just looking at all these numbers, they're just so <laughs> incredible. And that was a great play right there. Awesome. That was a big, big bucket there. We needed it. Uh, quickly, uh, you know, he struggled a bit uh, in this game, uh, in, in the, especially in the first half. Uh, but he ended up finishing with 10 points, uh, 3 of 9 overall. He, uh, he actually missed two free throws, which is uh, shocking. Only one other player missed a free throw for the Knicks, and that was RJ. He just missed one. He shot 5 of 8 from the three-point line. Uh, but, man, when Quickly is cooking, we got so many different types of weapons on this team. I really believe that other than a team with superior size all around that can shoot the three at a very high level, high dependable level, and also defense, that that's the only kind of team that can beat these Knicks. And I'm really describing only one team right now in the entire NBA, and that's the Milwaukee Bucks. That's it. So you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying right there. Ah, oh, there it is. That was the... Game-winning dunk. The game-winning alley-oop right there. All right, let's get to this here. So, this is the last three games. All right, look at the defensive rating. That's how this is sorted by here. Obviously, Isaiah Hartenstein has been tremendous. Look at that. A crazy 98.4. Oh, no, this is the last 12 games. I'm sorry. This is the last 12 games. This is all post-All-Star break. 98.4 for Isaiah Hartenstein. 98.9 for Miles uh, Deuce McBride. Look at Obi. A 104.1, a very lean, and, and then Josh Hart, of course. Of course. He's, he's, he's been the difference maker. Absolutely. 106.9 for him. However, look who is seventh. Well, we got quickly as fifth, 105.9, 109.6, and then Jericho with a 111.1, but he's only played a couple games. But look at RJ Barrett. Of all the starters on the Knicks since the All Star game, R.J. Barrett has the best defensive rating. I'll repeat that. Of all the starters since the All-Star game, R.J. Barrett has the best defensive rating, 113.6. Now, his net rating was a, a, a minus 0 0.6, so he has to up his offensive efficiency. And I think a lot of that is the three-point shot that's just leaving him, which I love him leaning into the drives to the hoop right now and if, he, if he's finding congestion he's spraying it out i've seen him do it, it like repeat it. it's become a habit for him now so i think it, as time goes on this this stat here is going to flip in even in more in his favor in fact let's look at this this is the past three games in the past three games rj barrett's defensive rating is now 110.3 so it's improved by almost three points and his offensive rating is 117.8. Now he's a, neg a, a net rating of 7.4. That's why the Knicks are dangerous, because we have all these players up and down that have different types of abilities and talents, and they're leaning into what works best for them. But look at RJ. We said the key, the key to the Knicks going far is RJ playing better defense. Well, here it is. This is showing you that he's played, played much better defense than he has pre-All-Star game. Woo, man, I'm a I, I've been uh, I've been battling a stomach flu, so uh, my energy level is a little odd. I'm trying to just keep it up right now. And plus, this game was so exciting. It's easy to do that. So this is a look at the final 10 games. This is a look of all the games since the All-Star break. And the Knicks, look at that. Outstanding. 
outstanding. Nine and three in the past since the All-Star break. And uh, I, I actually had the Knicks losing this den- this game to Denver. But now we got to flip it. So now the Knicks are 42 and 30. And if the Knicks can go eight and two in the last 10 games, they will finish with a 50 burger this year. And honestly, I see it happening. I see it happening. Look, Minnesota, uh, Ant-Man, he went down with a sprained ankle. We don't, I don't know if he'll be available on Monday. I hope he does. I hate, I hate when, uh, you know, I hate when that kind of that happens and stuff, but just the reality of the schedule, this could benefit us right here, but I still think we would have won that game no matter what. So there, uh, and then Miami at Miami, it's a revenge game for them. Even that game, I feel like the Knicks can take care of business. The way the Knicks, this Knicks team is playing right now, they can take care of that business. Then we got Orlando, Houston. Then we got Miami at home. Then we got Cleveland. That's the big game. Friday, March 31st, I believe, will be the biggest game of the Knicks season for the remainder of this Knicks season. At, well, I guess after the two uh, Miami games. But it is the Cleveland game. Because at, by that point, we should have a pretty good idea where we're going to end up, who's going to play who in that first round. And this might be a preview of what happens in the first round of the playoffs. And we get to play, we go to Cleveland to play them, which I like that. I want us to go to Cleveland to play them because I want us to get a little taste of that. So that during the playoffs, because, you know, it depends. If we end up with home court advantage, fantastic. But we may start have to start the series in Cleveland. So it keep, gives them that recent familiarity of it. And I, I, I just, I love the way things are falling out. Like, like the way things are playing out for the Knicks right now. We uh, Jalen Brunson have, suffering the foot injury. He was forced to take a couple of weeks off. That I, I like that because you rested him a bit. Uh, even Randall, uh, he's been a little bit gassed recently. He's even admitted it himself. Uh, so I hope that uh, well, he did play 36 minutes again tonight. <laughs> he was the high man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Even though he only shot 40% overall from the field, uh, shot one of six from the three-point line. Uh, but he did give us 20 points and seven rebounds. Uh, he, you know, some of his defense was there at times and some of it wasn't. You know, that's kind of like what you expect uh, from Julius Randle uh, at this point right now. But I think it would be it would benefit him as well if Thibs was, was able to find him some extra rest in these last 10 games. I think it's a must for the Knicks to move forward into this playoffs. All right. Well, I mean, I pretty much rattled off almost all of these stats already. Uh, Josh Hart, just tremendous. 13 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists in 32 minutes, 4 or 5 overall uh, from uh, the field. Goal, uh, in, uh, from the field. And Isaiah Hartenstein, he scored a point. It had been uh, two games in a row where he hadn't scored, uh, scored a point but led the team in plus minus. And now the, he got 6 points here, 9 rebounds for him, 1 assist. Man, was he also swatting the ball, tipping the ball. It caused more offensive rebounds for the Knicks. That was awesome. Awesome. Uh, you can see the plus minus here. Randall was a plus five. Mitch was a plus 11. Uh, Brunson was a minus five, even though he gave us 25 points. Uh, Arch, I think maybe it's possible that, uh, you know, the two-week layoff and uh, the foot might still be a little bit tender. He was he was flying high on adrenaline in that first quarter. So maybe that kind of wore off a little bit. But in the towards the end, in that fourth quarter, crunch time, he delivered a big bucket and deli- delivered a big assist to the alley-oop uh, dunk to basically win the game. So beautiful, beautiful. Uh, let's see what else we Oh, and R.J. Barrett, a plus 13 with his 21 points. Quinton Grimes, who started off the game very well. Nine points, 15, uh, plus 15. But for some reason, he played only 20 minutes in this game. Uh, and I guess it's, I mean, it's hard to argue with that when uh, the guy who he was, uh, who who've replaced him during those uh, uh, minutes right there, it was Josh Hart. His 32 minutes were tr- tremendously productive, tremendously productive. Uh, even though he did finish a minus five, he finished a minus five. Hartenstein finished a min- uh, finished a minus five, and Obi Toppin finished a plus one in the plus minus there. Uh, Denver Nuggets. Uh, uh, Contavious Caldwell uh, Pope did not have a good game. He struggled. He struggled with, and that was part of RJ's defense. Uh, whenever uh, Grimes ended up rotating on him, even Brunson did a decent job on Contavious. And he was very important to neutralize because Jamal Murray, man, can that guy hurt you? Look, he shot five of seven from the three point line, give you 25 points. And then Joker, 24 points, uh, but he didn't get a triple double. <laughs> That's like a win for us. Uh, 24, 10, and 8 for him. 
but only one of five from the three-point line. Oh, and there was a play. The, actually, the predecessor to that dunk, if you remember at the end of that uh, highlights there, was Mitch rotated over into the paint to stop the drive of, I, I think it was Jamal Murray, and then the ball got kicked out to Joker on the three-point line, and Mitch closed out hard, but not too crazy where he ended up in, 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 in the first row, like sometimes he does. Closed out hard and made the Joker uh, take a little step, and then uh, Mitch, once again, he did a double contest. Joker missed, Mitch broke out, and that's when J Jalen Brunson found him for the alley-oop dunk. Fantastic, fantastic series of, of, of de a defense to offense exchange right there for Mr. Mitchell Robinson. Fantastic. Uh, the Knicks did a good job on Michael Porter Jr., uh, I thought he was going to hurt us today, but he did not. Same with Darren Gordon. I mean, just up and down, excellent job by the Knicks on this team, even though they allowed them to score to shoot 51.2% overall. That's why the free throw line was so important. You can see it right here. We were a plus 13 from the free throw line, and that was the difference in the game. Uh, we got the battle. We won the battle on points in the paint, 56 to 48. We were even on fast break points, 11 all. Uh, when it came to points off turnovers, pretty much a wash right there. Assists, the Denver Nuggets, I believe, lead the league in assists, or they're in the top of uh, the league in assists. They had 30. We had 23 for us, which is still not that great, but better than, you know, sometimes we're down there with 18 and 20 or whatever. So, but look at that, steals. We, we won the block. We won the stocks, uh, the hustle stats. Uh, we finished with 13 hustle stats. They finished with five. So that was a tremendous, because we we took them out of their rhythm. We had them second-guessing themselves so much in that second half after they made that run. Once we made that 17-4 to run, it, it made the Knicks, they, the Nuggets definitely made an effort to get back in this game. And even, I believe they even have taken the lead for a split second there in the fourth quarter. But the Knicks were just so methodical, methodical in regaining the lead and the hustle that Josh Hart as infected, injected on this whole team was a major difference in that fourth quarter. Woo! Made it. Next one, 116, 110. 40, 42 wins now already. Wow. Unbelievable. There were people who did not think the Knicks could win 42 wins in an entire season this year. That's right. They did not think they, this could, they, they didn't even think this was a 500 team. Well, this shows them that they were wrong. That they were wrong. And, uh, Hopefully, uh, the prognosticators will continue to be shown that they were wrong by the Knicks continuing to win and make a deep, deep run. Deep run in those playoffs. I'm ready. I'm hyped for it. Man, I'm so pumped for this. All right. Thank you so much for watching this. Again, my name is George. Please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and drop your comments. Love the comments. I want to hear your feelings about this tremendous win today. And we're going to take care of business on Monday against the Timberwolves. Let's go. Let's go, Knicks. And I will see you around.